What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. Yesterday, or today actually, I was on Facebook and the good brother Devin, um, he sends me a lot of good stuff. Some of you brothers send me a, a bunch of foolishness, but Devin is always really on point. And he watches all of my videos that I produce here on this channel. And you guys remember that I talked about Monique who weighed in on this whole bonnet thing. Now, of course you had some black men who, uh, not in my comment section, but defended the right to women to publicly wear bonnets but now we're seeing actual people take a stance against bonnets. It's not just Monique or people in social media comment sections, but there is an apartment, okay? An apartment complex in downtown, which says that not allowed in the rental office. This is in Dallas, Texas. Now, before I get on bonnets, I would like to talk about something real quick, guys, and, and bear with me. But, you know, I'm from Sacramento, California, and um, in the 90s, there were very few hip hop clubs that was there. You had 815th and L, you know, uh, you know Ricky's, you know, you had Tunnel 21. But what happened in the city of Sacramento was that they understood that if you wanted to keep the business going, you could not throw hip hop parties in uh, in Black Sacramento uh, because somebody was going to get killed, somebody was going to be get shot, or, or 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 you'd have the police come out. So you might make a lot of money for that event, but what would end up happening was that you could lose your liquor license, you could lose the event. So what promoters started to do was it, it would play R and B. And it would be a heavy dose of house, you know, or um, a lot of raves. And they did that to keep the African-American crowd out. And it was not because hip hop wasn't great, but the kind of crowd that hip hop brought to these establishments. OK, um, maybe if you were somewhere way in Granite Bay or Roseville or Rockland, you know, you might at the jukebox the classic jukebox maybe back in the day they would play it because it was so far out but even then they had problems you know you you, you would have the, the 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 oak park guys and the guys from meadowview and, and the heights would drive wherever that these events would happen and something bad would happen okay now i want to talk about something if i can with bonnet now sisters of all educational backgrounds wear bonnets okay it's just not um women of the ghetto perspective women of all educational backgrounds wear bonnets but what happens is just like the hip-hop music back in the 90s in certain clubs it brings a certain element of people okay it brings a certain element of people to the apartment complex, you know? People who wear bonnets are, are likely to attract a certain type of people. This is what the apartment complex is saying. So if we have people wearing bonnets in the rental office, then immediately what's going to happen is the other tenants that are here are going to look at this place as being ghetto. And if there are too many people wearing bonnets, that is a good identifier that there are gonna be a lot of ghetto black people here. That, I'm not saying that that's true, but this is what the rental office is gonna think. And if people are walking around the rental office with, with bonnets, it's gonna be hard for us to rent our units to people. Because think about this, I don't care how nice an apartment complex is. If I walk around the apartment complex, and it's beautiful, but there are people in the rental office with bonnets, I'm gonna think. I'm gonna think twice about renting there. 
because I know what comes along with bonnets. I know what the potential is. Not that it comes along, but I understand what the potential is. And a lot of times, it, well, bonnets comes wave caps. The bonnets comes, you know, people from the hood. Okay, that's possible. People then playing their music loud, break-ins. I mean, it's easy to associate things with that. Look, even if it's not the case, and this is the reason why a lot of times when African-Americans move into uh, white communities, that's why you have white flight, you know, because there are certain indicators that if you get too many people going around here like that, the property value is going to go down. People who are in real estate understand this. You, you might say that it's racism and it very well could be. You might say it's discrimination and it very well could be. But even black people, high end black people, if you're someplace that people wearing bonnets in public to the rental house, I'm not making enough money. I'm not making enough money. I, I need to live somewhere where the rent, the rent is so expensive that bonnet wearers ain't gonna be there. Okay, that's how some people think. If, it, if it's black, so be it. If it's non-black, so be it. And, and businesses don't want to be associated with that look. So it's just not Monique saying this. Here you have apartment complexes saying this. Could you please keep your bonnet inside of your house? Do not bring your ass into the rental office where, perspe where, where prospective customers that want to sign year leases, we make money by leasing units. You're literally stopping our business by promoting a ghetto stereotype. And it's sad that, let me just be honest when I say this, okay? Because my mother used to always tell me, son, do not go outside with your shirt off. Okay? Do not go outside with your shirt off. Don't do that. Don't go outside with a wife beater on. Because that's stupid. And do you know what? She's right. That doesn't make any sense. That is what I would consider to be dumb. You know, that is dumb. Doesn't make any sense. Why would I go outside without my shirt on? That's for in the house. When I go into the public, I need to respect myself. Because it's not that I'm representing myself. I'm representing a group of people. I'm representing the brand of African-Americans. And then the bonnet people who wear the bonnets, nothing wrong with wearing a bonnet. But that is something that's more for the home. And when you take your bonnet out there, not only are you affecting the people that could misjudge you about our race, you're affecting the establishment that you live in. You're affecting the community you live in. Because what if you have white and Hispanic guests that want to rent the apartment? Asians, they see that bonnet there, they're going to be like, you know what? It's not the fact that black people are here, but this look looks like something that is ghetto. So I'm, I'm not going to even deal with it. Then people want to get mad and tell Monique she need to mind her business. Well, are you going to tell this rental apartment complex they need to mind their business? Certainly you're not going to tell them that, are you? Because the people who are wearing that is stopping their business. People are losing customers over that. Think about what property managers and owners of apartment complexes are doing. They have to um, repair all the units in the apartment. They have to keep the grass up. They have to keep all these things up. And then they do all of that only for people in the complex to deter other people because they don't want to do what they're supposed to do because they don't want to be adults. And you have to tell people, please be an adult. And don't wear your house clothes out to the rental office. Which is amazing at the level of the foolishness that we're operating on in 2021. This is ridiculous. But well, guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. I really appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe at the bell. Check out the first comment pinned to the top. And as you know, the buffoon remains at an all-time high. Don't forget the black men are perfect t-shirts. I'm out.